All righty then. Episode number 92. Hey Amen. We have the Disrupt Faith Podcast. We're having conversations around some of the most important topics that Christians often miss, forget, or avoid. Conversations to challenge us and help us grow in our walk with God. If you're interested in joining us on this journey, and you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing. I'm one of your hosts, Tech, along with... Ray Green. And... Jay Blunt. Hey, what's going on, fellas? What are these? What's going on, sir? Not much, man. How was, uh, uh, how was your week? I don't know. Is that, is that a weird question? I feel like... Uh, you know, you go know, first. You ask it every week, Tech. I, I, feel, I week. feel weird. Y'all got to help me out. My brain is like... Everywhere. Yeah, that was for weird. How was your week, Pastor Green? I think it was good. It was all right. Um, let me see. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary necessarily, but uh, uh, it was a good, good week. Try to be productive this week. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Pastor J. Week was pretty good. I went to the gym today. I actually spent most of the time trying to get a Charlie horse out. Um, which was awkward because I'm so tall. Um, I was working my hamstrings. And, hey. uh, I was lifting a good amount of weight, maybe about 20 pounds. And uh, excuse me, Fred. Um, <laughs> uh, like 20 pounds. I was doing a lot of reps and uh, just I guess I hadn't drank enough water before I went to the gym. <laughs> I was hurting. I was hurting. But I made it out. Man, Charlie horses are, right, man. It'll put you down. No. Damn. Damn. Listen. I, I'm a baby. If you in the Apple world, I'm not going to do no commercial for Apple. But I will say, yeah. I thought that Apple fitness thing was a joke. Mm -hmm. Fire. Fire. What do you mean? It, the Apple got Apple got this little thing you connected to with your Apple Watch, and then they have mm -hmm. their own little fitness uh, aerobics classes that, and it connects with mm -hmm. your watch and you watch it on the screen. Fire! I, mm -hmm. I don't never do no aerobics class. I've been doing it for a week and a half now. Do you wear your headband and wristband too? And my little shorts, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 headband, wristband, tube socks. Uh, I, I go at it. I look like Spice Adams up there. Uh, you know, I'm going Spice on that. Adams. Uh, oh, man. Hey. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I don't want to give a commercial for Apple, but that. What episode are we at? 99? 92. 92? Almost 92? at 100. We got to figure out what we're going to do for a hundo. A hundo is a lot, bro. It is. I don't it know is. what to do. I mean, we, 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 uh, we we stuck stuck inside the house. Uh, well, some of us. Jason. Yeah, I'm out in these streets. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, 100's coming up soon. We're at 93. Did I say 92? Yeah, you said 92. I'm telling you, y'all got to help me, bro. We're at 93. Oh. Uh, episode Jeez. 93 today. So that I is a three. huge blessing. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Michael Todd preaching in the water. Amen, somebody. And we're going to be talking about community um, which I feel like is a you know, I, you know we'll get to that. But we're gonna be talking about Michael Todd and community. Before we get to that, actually, yeah, no, no. Before we get to that, let's get to the days of the week. Do we? Know, yeah, what's what's popping with today, Pastor Jay? Man, today is no National Hemp Day. Like, yeah, shout out to the cannabis plant. <sighs> that uh, does so many wonderful things. I was about to get some uh, CBD oil, but I was like, I'm a sinner. They, Why not, bro? I, it just worked on me. Just there, rub it on your the... No, nah, bro. See what I'm saying? I feel like I've been... <laughs> ah, I can't. I'm going to do you, it one you day. You don't get high, bro. It's too late. I've been programmed Hey, episode 100. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> we all get our personal... All three of us. Get we going, Joe. Go. <laughs> Bring, I'm gonna get some gummy bears, the, we some, good. some some edibles, hey. and we all just gonna sit around and read the word. Tell they, read the <laughs> word, bro. 
That would be wild. No, I'm good. That's, no. That's what we're yeah. going to do. They, they, For they, the views. They, 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 uh, they done program me. Um, all right. So, so that's New Hip Day, I guess. That would be hilarious. Shout out to yeah. Fred sounds like he's down. Fred's down. Fred's down. down. And uh, <laughs> National Homemade Soup Day. I don't know. I'm not a mm. big soup eater. I don't, I don't I love soup. I, I'm not a big soup. soup I can make trash. soup. I've made a number of soups because my wife, she loves soups and mm. different things like that. So I'll make her soup. A good chick, homemade chicken noodle soup with egg noodles when you're not feeling well. That's torch. That's awesome. Soup is 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 uh pad thai with too much water. Chicken noodle soup. Why just pour out the water and have the soup go. noodles in the chicken? This guy again. It's National <laughs> Hemp Day. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> based on sex, brains, <laughs> and uh, not you don't receive it. Uh, National Thank a Mail Carrier Day. I don't think hey. they get enough love. <clears throat> two, two, two occupations that don't get enough love. The mail carriers, Amazon, FedEx, all of them. And not nah, because teachers get it. They get attention. Okay. <clears throat> they don't get love, but they don't, they don't get, they, they get attention, but not the love. Okay. The second one is your pizza delivery drivers. Mm. But That's when when the weather Friday. is bad, it don't matter what it is. You Thursday, expect some of those delivery Friday. places to be open. Pizza is Look, so delightful. Jason, speaking of that, I literally a couple of days ago while it was snowing, we ordered pizza. That's foul. You put that poor in the Did you, you see me? what I'm saying? Like you, when when you called, you knew they was gonna be. They were gonna I knew they up. was gonna be there. My family was. All right, here's the question: Do you have you lowered? It used to be a point in time when you would just tip. But mm-hmm. now there's a delivery fee. Mm. Some some of them do. Most of the delivery places include a delivery fee now. Delivery fee. And that delivery fee doesn't count as their tip. Well, I don't know what that's about, but do you still I, tip? I have I could I could walk to my my pizza places like right across the street and I still get it delivered. Uh-huh. I could see it from my door <laughs> and I get it delivered. And then I don't tip because I'll be like, you went across the street. Oh, that man. Bar. Like, no, nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, nah, we got, you know, we took um, at least a couple bucks. You Did you, and now the apps got I the tip. automatic percentage. They be like yeah, uh, 10%, 15%. And I'm like, dang. Nah, you don't. It starts at 15, much. dog. Joke, yeah, I don't want some pizza. Yeah, I lower it. Yeah, I lower it. I'll be like, no, <laughs> thank you. I do give them something because I'll be, I feel bad. But no, nah, you definitely don't get the appropriate amount. But that, that's right. Nah. Pizza, people do get uh, the delivery right. carry. Shout out to all the delivery right. delivery carriers. All right. All right. Last thing, we went a little long. Optimus Day. So if you're hey! Optimus. I'm not. Today is your day. Fred is not an obvious. He's a pessimist. Is it called a pessimist? Am I, yep. a, am I an optimist? I'm an optimist. I'm right in the middle. Yes, you are. You are. Nah, I'm an optimist. Oh. He's optimist. Oh, optimist too, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm an optimist. I think I'm optimist. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm an optimist. All right, we well, shout out to all the optimists. Op- op- optimist. This, this mm-hmm. Today's our day. All right, uh, thank you, Pastor Jay. Now let's get to it. Fair Pharisees, all right? I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that I'm a hater. I've come to conclusions. I, I've come to that conclusion. I'm okay with it. I love myself, okay? I, I say, I wake up in the mirror and say, hey, you's a hater, and I still love you, okay? So now I done found something new to hate on. Okay, Michael Todd out here living his best life, preaching in the pool. Uh, actually, we, let's show this clip real quick. And that was then, impressive. That's it. And then I could, then I could. See, okay, I could do with my hey. stomach. What in the world? All right, hold on. Let me, let me uh, share this. I know what the is going to And then. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um... Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, here. Let me share this. I got this. Share sound. Boom. All right, share. Here we go. Um, 
do y'all see do y'all see this yeah we can see the screen yep you see michael todd yep <laughs> yeah. uh, all right here's michael todd a clip of michael todd preaching in the rain and guess what happened he was led by the holy spirit into the wilderness he was escorted by god some of y'all been calling your storm a devastation and god said that this is just the destination that i have to create in you oh i feel oh, this broke thing. the mic the character the stamina the wherewithal the sensitiveness mm. that you need to be everything i've called you to and right now i bet on day 21 jesus hello was like i can't this. see you can't. I can't see. No, he can't see. Uh, I, was, I was like, oh, you can't see? He's <laughs> getting in my eyes. He was like, and got me. <laughs> All right, so. Hold on, bro. I done lost. I don't know how to stop this. All right, boom. There we go. All right, so here's the thing. I just share my quick thoughts. And the fair Pharisee, you guys can tell me if this is fair What's, or if I'm being okay. a little Pharisee. Okay. All right. It's All right. a bit much. I mean, I love, you know, I love watching people speak. I love the art of presenting and teaching. I, I you know, I love I I I I admire his effort in um I, I can't stand people to say just go up there and preach the word. Like you don't have to put any thought into it. Um I I, I um I admire him really thinking about how can we make this come to life? How can we make this creative? And I think they do that with every series. It's always a different thing. I think there's a line where that, and to me personally, I think there's a line to where that becomes gimmicky. And I think oh, that like, it's there, buddy. Yeah. And I, and I think yeah. like every presenter has to ask himself, like, is my analogy greater than my point? Like, mm. like if you're okay. if you have something like that, it should be to like really solidify the point that like drives the point home. Now, granted, you will remember this message. You remember, and it is streaming, mm. so people will watch it. And it's going to be like, man, you remember that dude who's preaching on the boat and had the rain coming inside you? I, I think you will remember it. But to me, it felt like something that covered up a lack of substance. I think if you remove the water, you remove the pool, it's just another message about your storm and God being with you with your storm. Now, I'm a hater. I'm probably hating. But, you know, that is, that is my thoughts. Fair, fair. What do you guys think? So, quick question: Are we the fair Pharisee? Your where where the game is basically? Are you? Are, is it fair? Talk about your. Yeah. Do you think that is a right? fair criticism? Do you think it's fair to criticize that, or do you, or, or or do you think it's a bit pharisaical? You a Pharisee, man. You a Pharisee. And spoiler alert, Jason, I'm coming. <laughs> that you too, you a Pharisee, man. All right. Come on. I got both you. Of both, <laughs> both of y'all Pharisees. Look, we just talked about over these last podcasts how the church could be, uh, what's the word, uh, archaic. The church could be um, not grasping to this, uh, to, to to catch up with the times. I think, I think, well, let me ask y'all both because John like his messages. Like, I, I don't listen nope. to that. Uh, I never it's the this same. Message. You know it's so, the... so, so what I'm saying is, I mean, like he's not like you. You probably just didn't, like I. I don't listen to his messages, so we we can say that it has no substance, and that's our opinion. But there are some people like he's meeting them where they are. I, I would say like, I, there, I, there, there's a yeah. certain yeah, and, and for some people, like you said, like we're talking about them on the podcast. There's a lot of, I mean, that I, that clip's been going viral before we decided to talk about it. I seen that clip It felt viral. a bit cloudy, like a little bit of a cloud chasing, like for things like this to be talked about. And how long is the entire yeah, body of Christ? Many, 
Go ahead. Sorry. My no, no what? No, I, I guess I guess yes to a certain extent it does it does feel like that, but at the same time, like it's it, it, you could think about it, it's reaching people that most likely wouldn't that would come across their Instagram feed. It won't come across their Facebook feed, but a lot of people, other people from different circles have seen it, shared it, and it's come across their feed. And it may you never know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like for me, for me, it wasn't for me when I watched it, it wasn't I can't get it. Do it. Wow. I tell you, you, you I did it. I, I, t- I did it. Look at me. Oh. Hey, you did do it. You did not come in. You just put a bottle of water in your head. This dude had like a whole bunch. Right, give me like, a that's pool. commitment. Okay, like, come on, bro. But I guess what I'm saying, like, it's not for you and it's not for me. It's not for us three. Like, but I'm just saying that there could be there could be somebody out there who have really spoke to them at the time and the fact of all the imagery really kind of helped them stay engaged with it. We well, had, what uh, did that what did it what did it do? I right, so like after you get past this dude. Okay, no, no, what I'm saying is for, uh-huh. for you, all right, what was the what was the main point of the message? G- God, hey, let storm. me let me get in too though. All right, go ahead, into, okay. Okay. I'm gonna let Fred finish his point because I don't want to interrupt. Okay. Now for me, <laughs> he was on a boat. <laughs> Come on, we got analogies too. I mean, we got <laughs> he we got bought boats. a boat. I had time to make a boat. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> while you was talking. It's like <laughs> this this dude. All right, so listen. It was very theatrical, extremely theatrical. It was very gimmicky, and I think it it um it took away from the message. I think it it was more of a distraction than it was a statement maker, because it was like, oh, it, it just took away from everything. And this is my opinion. I think it took mm-hmm. away from everything. And I think that um he was fo- it, it was I felt like he was focused on what like it was so much. You're standing in water, you're being pulled in a, it was it was I felt like I was watching a play. Like not a message. I felt like I was watching and again I said a rehearsal because I was seeing the cues, I was seeing the cameraman walking in front of him. It was a lot going on. And there was so much going on that I felt like it was a distraction to the points that he was attempting to make. It was just a distraction. I think that you have to be careful. Like when it's too much, too much. Yeah. You're going to get the views. You're going to get the views. You're going to get, you're going to get that stuff. It's going to be, it's going, but are people watching because of the message or are they watching because he was on a boat in the middle of the stage? And once they see what he's doing, and what's being done, are they going to turn away or are they going to stay and listen? Because there's just so much going on. Imagine believe- imagine trying to listen to, all right, who's your favorite pastor or speaker? Uh, he would say really Robbie Zacharias, that, but. Or anyone. <laughs> all right, let's, let's say you Chuck saw Swindoll. Robbie. Chuck Swindoll. Let's go. Okay. All Chuck right, Swindoll. Swindoll. Let's go with Chuck Swindoll. Pastor Swindoll. Oh, man, now, let's imagine that Chuck Swindoll decided <laughs> to teach a message on holiness, perfect, anything, but he decided to do it in the middle of a circus. Okay. Come on, brother. In the middle of a circus. Come on. Like, my attention is going to be everywhere else but on like i'm 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 gonna be oohing and ah and not everything else and then you're gonna ask tech just what you asked him right what you just asked tech, like what was the message about be like you know what only thing i remember is uh dude was in some thousand dollar shoes in, in in a boat on this stage like that's going to stick out more than anything and when my gimmicks Jason- and when my my toys and when my all of that outshines the the point of the message I gotta rethink some things. But Jason, I, I, I asked and I asked I asked you the question too. I asked you how the question because I know the answer you're gonna give. You know what the message is about. What is the message? What's the main point of the message? 
I don't. Um, so, I, actually, so he said, no, I did, no, because you Tech, Tech just said that he said that you said that he the message could have been done in five minutes. Tech just said it's all about such and such such. He had to do all that. Yeah, I know he what the message that the, was about right. He said that the message was about a storm was going to come in your life. And God got that there will be storm. Uh, every gospel, yes. and and then and then he talked about you uh, being being anchored as well. Anchored. Okay. So what I'm saying is for for us for us that message one we grew up in the church two like that's not our side like we we for us I'm not saying it's for us but what I'm saying is and we we ran across it like there are some people who haven't heard that message. Uh. Or, haven't no Whoever, so you're telling me, you're telling the me storm? That, that's so, true tech, I'm here's, just, here's, here's step, step outside the church box i'm telling you there are people who didn't grow up in church who have now no imagine your lose. first day at church you see that it would be the most amazing thing in the world no. and, and, and what, what will what will be the most a, amazing thing in the world? If, if I was coming to the church with a preconceived notion that it's going to look this way, it's going to look that way, and mm -hmm. I came and I seen that sermon, every sermon is not going to look like that. But I, I it was will, I will come. They doing I'll the whole online. series in the boat. Every sermon on the series I will, is in the boat. But what I'm saying is, I will come back and I will listen to more messages. But, but Again, the thing not is. I would we, come to see what, what he's going to do next. Exactly. Like, I think we think that we can disciple people by osmosis. As long as they come back, they will grow. If you don't have anything yeah, of but substance but, but, there, but hold on, hold on. it don't matter. But what I'm saying is, number one, now again, I could be, I, I don't listen to Pastor Tom. But what I'm saying is, you're going under the assumption from that one message that there's not going to be substance there. Or are you going in an uh, assumption that somebody who is a babe in Christ who's coming to that that that's not a substance for them? Like 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 the scripture talks about it too. Like there's there's a time for milk. Like there like that was a milk message. Yes, we can agree that's a milk message. And that like for you for you, you're like I don't need that message. That's fine for you. But what I'm saying is, as a pastor, you do have to give a milk message. You got to give some neat message because your congregants is not going to be all mature Christians. Your congregants are not going to be all people who grew up in the church. You're going to have to have those times. You don't know. Does he do that every sermon? He don't do that. There's, there's a sermon. gimmick. Sermon. No, there's a gimmick every every thing. And the, uh, but again, I'm not saying the other extreme that you should not try. I love sermon illustrations. I love things that. I love the idea of someone coming to the church, like you said, and inspecting one thing and getting something com completely different. Like, wow, I've never been through it. I remember when we all remember when Gospel Go Go was a thing. And, and I remember these little thug kids at my school getting saved at Gospel Go Go cause just because they went to church and they had never seen anything like that you could be a Christian and still listen to Go Go music. I love the creativeness that. Um, Christians and in particular transformation puts into their sermons, but I think for oh, any because oh, 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 okay, okay. you know you know why Fred argued. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I okay, I think for any Christian, any presenter, any preacher, you have to ask yourself: Am I doing this because I want to do it, or am I doing it because it is effective? Like, does this, does this really cool. But how you know it's not effective? How you know it's not effective? Because you're, hold on, this is what makes you a Pharisee right now. Because you deem in your own heart that it's not effective to you, so therefore, it's not effective. I, I, I'm just saying, if we live in a world where one of the biggest problems, and I think we can agree, maybe not, that so many churches and so many believers are still on milk, and, and there is no me. And I'm not talking about you got to go into like the deep uh, freaking. Uh, yeah, that's what he want. He want to go to the deep. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying you got to do all this stuff. I'm just saying that we understand that there's a huge problem in the yes. church that that we are all 
that there is a more the self-centered messages God's going to get you through your and but you, that's you, one you, man, you. Tech. We talk but about the, one but message I'm saying, one man. do we need another grand literally dancing in the rain despite at what point do we begin to require church to, churches to give something to substance especially when you are in a position of influence when you can when you can influence you know how many other pastors preachers churches copy transformation why not lead the way and and, and do something of substance it was I, I it was agree. gimmicky but what I'm saying is those uh, like if the argument is for other churches who see that and try to copy the same thing I agree with that, but this is this is his church. Maybe like this is where he this is how he feels based on what his church has done, his congregants, what his demographics is like in this congregation. That he felt okay, and, and and again, I'm saying that that could be totally off. But what I'm saying is, I I am leaning towards the benefit of the doubt, right? That maybe his his demographic. Is something that optimist. speaks to this. What'd you get out the uh, message, Fred? Maybe, Fred, what'd you no, get out the message? You sound like an optimist. Maybe, maybe I am. With people, I am an optimist. You know what? That's true. I am pessimistic <laughs> about things, but with people, I am very optimistic. Fred, what'd you and get out the message? Get huh? What'd you get I out the message? the message? I listened to the message. I told you that. Well, you weren't attracted by the uh, pool in the rain? It did not intrigue you? I, I, let, let, let's make this very clear. I said it earlier on. Okay. I said for me, I don't listen to Pastor Ty, and for me, that's not my type of message. I said that very clear. So for me, and my point is for for us, for people like like whatever category you want to put it in, that mess. Uh, is it for us? Hold on, friend. Say that again. There's a glitching. whole segment of a demographic. Jason, did you hear that? I'm glitching. Or, or my glitching? Hello? Yeah, you glitching a little yeah, bit, but I think, yeah, I can see. He, I think he's just saying, like, it wasn't for us, but there is a demographic that he believes that that message could um, fit to. And so because it's not for us, we should leave it alone and just hope that it reached someone who likes um, water sports. <laughs> and, I mean, we're not anybody. We're regular Christians. It's not like we're above somebody else's level. I didn't say that, but we have dip, like what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, like, are you like when I go to a message, I can do with all the visual. I don't need visuals. Like, I, I, my 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 style is like a teacher. Like, I, I came up. My father was more of a teaching type type of preacher. He didn't do like the hooping and hollering. He just taught, you know. So I, that's what I'm used to. Chuck Swindoll, he's a teacher. Like, so that's my style. That's what I mean. Not that it's better or one is better or worse than the other one. It's just that my style is teaching. There are some people who they need they need the visual. They need the visual. Some people so, need the hooping and hollering. Yeah, uh, so I don't think anybody needs the hooping and hollering. Well, I know I mean, some people I, like the. I threw that in there. I threw that in there to be clear. People. It's definitely like, entertaining sometimes, but you know, for me, I just so so one thing for me. This is just this is just me, personal me. I I can't justify the cost associated with the whole thing. <laughs> Like, I hope they donate that boat to somebody who needs a boat or use it for, like, I don't know. There's just a lot of cost involved that, like, when I look <laughs> at stuff like that, I'll be like, do we really need to do that? Like, we got this nice screen up here. We could have got so many dope illustrations and graphics to make that same point. Like, we could have used this money for X, Y, Z. That, like, that's how I, I look at it personally. And um, I think we can, even though it's their choice, it's their business, they can do what they want to do with it. I'm just saying for me personally, I look at the expenses involved in doing that, potential expenses, and like see how they could have made those same points without the theatrics and did just as good, just as well. I don't know. That's me personally. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just... It is what it is. And uh, I'm not, I think he could have, I, I think, uh, I can't justify it personally. Okay. Okay. My I didn't last think it helped. I didn't think it helped. 
My, my last question. Do you think that we, when I say we, believers, should not hold preachers accountable in general to teach things of substance? So are you talking about this message? I'm just yeah, saying I'm in general. I just said so. I mean, of course, in general, yeah. I, I, I agree. Like that's a general yes. I, I, I'm saying so. Uh, who holds the preacher accountable? Who is the we? Is it who? Who should the it we? not be us as believers? Like if if people definitely. So I think that falls back into Fred's Fred's uh, Fred's uh, point as far as like there is a demographic that that works for. But and that's that, that demographic to me, that's a is cop his, out. But it's not because it is because, because, you, because, because let me, we go, 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 go ahead. Let, 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 let Jake say the, the the truth is that if you go to a church, let's say you visit a church, right, and this church has a thousand people in it, or whatever number of people in it, and you go to it and you're like, you know what, the message ain't really hitting on it, anything for me, and I'm gonna go find somewhere where. I can get what I need to get or learn what I need to learn. But those other people decide to stay because they are getting something from it. That's on them. So if you don't like a restaurant, you just don't go back. But I, but because they have thousands of people who do like it, you don't poop on them. Um, I, 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 I understand that, that point. My thought on it is that we have... We, we live in a world where the majority of people consider themselves to be Christian, about 31 or something percent. Christianity is a leading example. I think most people will agree. There's actually been studies that have been shown that this generation of Christianity is the most biblically illiterate generation of Christianity thus far. Uh, we had, we, uh, the scripture even talks about t- people who seek preachers that just tickle their ears. I, 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 right. so, so when we say like things like that's just their audience, to me, and this is my personal thing, and again, I could be being a first. You know, I'm just keeping it 100. I feel I may feel different later. It is perpetuating the problem that we have in the church of immature Christians that seek to come to church to be entertained. Again, to me personally, the office is very comfy. It's not the fact that he had water. It's just that behind that has to be some type of substance. And I, I, because it was fascinating, I, I was fascinated by it. So I watched a good portion of the, the, the sermon. I, you know, I watched it. So, and it just, it, it, it lacks it's, it's no substance. And, and you could say, well, well that's what, for you. But at what point, like, just because people like it don't mean it's good for them. That, I mean, so. I'm about okay. to say something. Rebuke me. I'm just going to have a question. I'm going to ask you a question. Rebuke me. Because I, I can't recall, and I could be wrong. So say the scripture. Is it a pastor's job or responsibility to. Uh, help his congregants to a place of maturity. I mean, so not, not, yes, maturity. But I'm talking about from a from we're talking about from a substance thing that we're talking about milk versus uh, strong meat. I'm going to use that analogy. Is that a pastor's job or is that on the individual? Um, I'm talking about his sole responsibility, and I'm asking that question genuinely. It's not his sole responsibility, but he plays a huge part. To play, I mean, no, the scripture talks he about plays a, he plays a. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, the scripture talks about the importance of like pastors actually being a, a shepherd over the people. I even heard someone say this the other day, and and I guess this is also why, uh, and this may not be directly to Michael Todd, but it is a it is a thing. It is this commerce thing where you draw people so you can sell them more books. It's like you keep giving them nothing to keep them to keep them coming and they, i mean it's it's like crispy it's like freaking crispy cream crispy cream is crispy cream is absolutely delicious but you can crush those little thin paper donuts in no time but it's so full of junk but you feel like i don't know why i brought crispy cream in and maybe i'm getting hungry you but, know why. But, I, I, but i can't I, but, but again to qualify like, I, mean, I, I wouldn't call it junk. I would just call it milk. Like, I would just call it something that is not that junk. This junk. We can't no, be not, it, like... I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm just saying, like, what he was saying 
was not was but not I, like I heard against the sermon. Scripture. I watched the sermon. Okay, but so was, was the sermon against scripture? It was it, it was really scripture. They they I, they don't read scriptures in these. They talk but, through okay, scripture. Okay, 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 so what I'm saying, but what I, I guess what I'm saying is. Is what was what was he saying contradictory or something that is a problem that should be taught outside of outside of the, the, the was it substance was, was it something that it was, like it's, it's uh, um, God, imagine you storm. yeah imagine like all right like you have to be anchored the most like he showed the yacht he said the most important thing about this yacht is the anchor and the anchor as long as you're anchored in Christ. You can get through the storm. So he basically illustrated that point. Like that was so it. What's what's the what's the problem? I mean, so, so I get it that that's that's very surface. I'm not, I'm not saying there's a problem, but I'm telling you what that was like. That was it. And, 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 that I, was and I guess that's my only my only question is just like, is his like? He, I mean, there wasn't nothing. Uh, Blasphemy! They blasphemous! They no, he didn't say anything wrong. Yeah, I don't so think he said anything wrong. It's, it's, it's one message. I don't think Tech is saying that he's saying anything wrong either. I just think that he's saying it was just, it was do, just. All right, let, let me just say this: do do we have to do we have to call him to the carpet for that message? Is that message worth calling to somebody to the carpet to? No, but I think he he thinks that that is. Saying. I think he thinks that's the sum of what what happens there. He said yeah, every sermon is a there's something. Okay. I, thought, I, 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 I watch Michael Todd. And, I, and again, I, I know people love him. I don't have an issue with Michael Todd. I don't Todd. watch it, so I could be wrong. I, I, don't, I, I, watch it. I don't have an issue with Michael Todd, but I, I, I think we have at least had to establish a line where we can say that was just. No one would do that. I'm going to tell you why. Because he has a large congregation and numbers equal success. And because he's one of the most successful ministers out there and has one of the most successful churches out there, there's no other church that's going to say, um, don't do this because what he's doing is working. Now, working in regards to creating uh, people who you know, can go out and do, you know, making disciples or, you know, transforming lives is called trans transformation church. I don't know, but mm -hmm. if it's, if it's working in the terms of numbers, then there's no denying. So it almost doesn't, that's when we, you were talking about the blueprint or someone see what he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, so if the goal is to get souls, I'm just going to say souls very loosely um, or members he looks like he's a, a success. And so no one's going to say anything unless he has some complete, you know, kerfuffle where he does something crazy. And even if that's the case, it's still probably not going to happen because we have John Gray as an example for someone who totally did something outlandish yeah. and crazy. And then he still is, you know, doing this thing. So. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Because that's the this all comes back to John Gray because it's that same <laughs> it's the same crap to me. Michael Todd is a little more solid than John Gray. John Gray will just freestyle. He John Gray just does not believe you own the Bible. He's just like, trust me, I'm just gonna freestyle this. I, I mean, as some, and not for our own Pharisee. Like, I hate those little YouTubers who just get on, trash That's everybody, and act That's like, I was watching somebody today. I, I cannot stand those people. And I'm not saying that that's where we need to go to just be like, oh, rah, 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 this is not biblical. But I mean, we got to be able to say, yo, crap is crap. Or junk food is junk food. Like, if 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 I eat some, I don't love know, it. Yeah, I, I, that's that's when um that's what I feel like we have to start doing. Like if I if I eat some junk food, bro, don't tell me kale chip. Uh, what's them little delicious barbecue chips? They're uh these little kettle barbecue chips. I know they're not healthy. They're they're try I know I'm eating junk food right now, but I don't try to. But you acting me. like that's the only thing on the table. 
That is, but, but that, that is a huge problem. It is. But, 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 but how, okay. Okay. All right. What? We're going to go long. We're going to go long. No, nah, we, we done. We already yes. done. We good. We here. I'm done. Because I think we argue just to argue. But I do not listen to my, uh, Michael Todd. So I could have a change of opinion if I knew the history. I do, I have I never heard a message of it. It's still happening because I haven't watched that one. But I mean, we could probably be a hundred percent of fluff of what y'all are saying. I I don't know. I haven't listened to it, so I don't know. So, but you just know the on. messages you hear, though. I do know the messages I hear. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Shady <butt. laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, you know, maybe I'm being a Pharisee. I, again, I think Michael Todd is. I, I, there is a lot that I do appreciate about Michael Todd. I do appreciate his effort, and I do appreciate his creativity. One of the things I always quote him on, which I think a lot of uh, pastors and preachers, Mister Bo, he said the very first thing, one of the very first things he did when he became the pastor of Transformation Church was spend like $80,000 in cameras. And everybody thought he was crazy. But it's those cameras that caused his um, sermons to later go to later go viral, X, Y, Z. And I think in benediction, I'm sorry. But I, this, I, one of the things that I think, uh, you know, Charlemagne from the Breakfast Club always says, is that he doesn't want to be a character, character of himself. And I see this a lot with a lot of preachers, and I even had to check myself. Like, the things that I say, whether or not people agree with them, I really do think those things. Whether they're wrong, dumb, outrageous, it is honestly what I, what I think. And so what happens is people can expect you to always have a controversial take on something and then if you buy into that hype you'll just be saying stuff just to say stuff i feel like you know i don't know him but like i feel like when you're at that position you you can easily fall into okay how do i one up the last thing that i did how do i you know surprise people and keep it going and then you you drift away from in my opinion, a lack of substance. I think whether, I don't think, even I think of milk and meat, I mean, we could go there and open it up. Like, I feel like it, to me, it could be one of those cliche words. Like, what does that mean? Like milk and meat. And, 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 is it? I know, the, I, I know what it literally means, but I was just No, I'm not saying it. you don't, okay. but I'm saying okay. like, how does it, how is the is the meat is the milk and the meat part the substance or is it how it is delivered? If that makes sense, like is it like we're not going to talk about this because it's too heavy, or is it we are going to talk about it? But I want to break it down in a way that you understand. To me, it's still substance there, but you're breaking it down in a way that people from different walks of life or different stages in the Christianity can can understand it. Here's, can I say one last thing? I, th I think sometimes what I had learned by myself, I'm not going to say you guys, but what I had learned about myself is that I grew up in the church. And sometimes the things that I think that is like everybody should know, I ran across some people who literally heard a message or heard about something Christian based and I, and it was like a life changing thing for them. And I was just like, I heard that since I was like seven and my friends heard that since they was like seven. And what I, what I, what for me, what I'm learned, what I have learned to do is like everybody did not come from the same background I came from and the circle my friends came from. So mm -hmm. where they are for me, for me, I heard it like, Oh, I heard that. But for them, it was the first time they heard it. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that 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 met them where they are. And it has some, it brought fruit in their life. Now, depending on if that person stays there or if that's it, I'm, I'm with you. But what I'm saying is like, all I was saying about the message is that there could, 
it's not out of the realm of possibility that somebody heard that message and it was a life changer message. They never heard a message like that. Maybe they even heard a message, period. It's not out of the realm of possibility that there is somebody, even if it's just one, even if it's just one person in the whole entire world, that message, I cannot say, we, can, we cannot say to that. Now that's why I say I, I'm not totally poo-pooing to that one message. Now well, we're going to go through the totality of somebody's ministry and like every single man, then I, I see that I see the I can see okay that's a that's something different. But I'm just talking. We just talk about one message. We talk about that one thing. I can't poo poo that one message. That's it. Tech was, really wants to disagree with me so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, I agree. I mean, it could be one, but um, with that being said, I still think that. It could have been done without the boat water. So this is gonna come back up because Fred is gonna hear somebody <laughs> preaching some boy, and he's gonna be like, ah, da, 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 da. and I would say, Oh, now now you don't know, like you know. Hey, but, uh, you seen that one guy? It's an old clip. I have to find it. He came out the uh balcony on a zip cord because oh, Jesus is coming back. I, I, I appreciate that. Remember the dude who hurt himself jumping? A, uh, oh yeah, yeah, with the trampoline. Yeah. That's your I favorite. I appreciate trip. all of that, but you we know. can do it. But the power of the Holy Ghost is easy. Yeah. Just jump over it. You can't appreciate that. But the poo poo. The only difference between those two, those those were extravagant examples, is money. They didn't have the money to do it. That's No, again, yeah. what I think it You're was creativity. To this friend. Okay, it I'm sorry. is. It was very. It's very creative to freaking preach and boat. My my fighting is against this idea of this this lack of substance messages it, in in the church as a whole. And we don't never. I feel like we, you know, we always be like you can't, and not just here in general. I feel like a lot of it's the sentiment of a lot of people, and they could be right that that you can't. You can't, you can't say anything because you know who knows. It's like, bro, come on, man. The, even if, even if we go through the, the idea of just talking about another, how often we have this idea of a storm messages, and if you just, you, you know, but because all right, y'all are stressing me out. Where's, where's my storm water? Where's my storm? I'm, I'm back in the storm. Oh my back God. In the storm you your headphones <laughs> or your, your microphone. I, I, I'm God. like, Tom, we got money for this because. Here's the thing, bro. You don't have that money. <laughs> Here's the thing, no. It's just, it's just me here, bro. And this is my problem. Okay, Fred, we just here. We just go park the car. I've been in uh, uh, sign up. You know, you haven't been arguing in the car. You argue so much you got to park because you it's distracting you from driving. We got to park the car. Just keep driving. <laughs> Fred, it's keep stop driving. me upset. Here's the thing. All right, and this 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 was a, a one trigger for me uh, I, I, about the message. Okay, so it's this year. A lot of churches do it. They uh, it's the thing where either at the end of the year or sometime there's this big offering, and then it is. Uh, I don't. I, I think this, this his was the crazy faith offering. Yeah, he like, mentioned oh, that during the message. Give your crazy faith offering, and the Lord's gonna bless you, and uh, you know. God not gonna bless you unless you give your crazy faith offering. So you give your crazy faith offering, and then in this message, he was like, Well, you're like, I know I gave my crazy faith offering, but now I'm not seeing the things that uh you know I thought that I would see. It's like it, each message is always a cover for why the things that you promised to people were gonna happen didn't happen and I, I i mean i'm just curious like and what is the point where we begin to say I, I, it's not hating it's just like this is a lack of substance and though it may be entertaining people it may not be helping them like even jesus said uh be careful when everybody speaks well of you you would think that would be an awesome thing to be spoken well of everybody but one of the things he alluded to if i'm not uh, blaspheming and making up stuff is it could be also be a sign that you compromise. People love compromise. People love a convenient 
snack. Tell me that God's going to get me through my storm. Tell me that he's going to crush all all, all my enemies and it's all going to work out. And, and it, life don't work out like that. Life don't work out like these sermons. And I, I just don't hear that in the message I, I hear. Again, and to me, if it had some type, in my opinion, again, fair, and I could be being a Pharisee, but if there was some type of point, like, point, like I just dumped water on my head. There was no point. You can't say, well, no, maybe there was a point. No, there was no point. It's like, we're just going, all right, what's next week? You you don't think that that's something, all right. Thank God you know, that I'm I'm uh, done talking. Yeah, you, is, you win, man. You win. That's what you wanted, you Pharisee. You wanted to win. I so don't, I, you and God knows win. why. Because I, you you tempted me That's to go darker. Because I, I know, know I know. I'm, I'm with you. I, I really want to say I'm more right. about these preachers, but I'm trying to be politically I'm correct. Because we with you. we won rapid <laughs> with these look oh, anyway. I am being the Pharisee. And Fred has got me in my flesh. Who's my e <sighs> I don't know what to say next. I'm all gassed up. I'm all riled up. <laughs> oh, but, okay. <laughs> Are you, was that real or was that not real? <laughs> That's just sad, bro. Like, <sighs> is there no meat? I, and what is that? I, 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 There's meat know. at Light City. Okay. That's sure. what you need to know. <laughs> And there's some uh, different kind of meat at Cornerstone. Jason brings up a good point. I'm about to fight you. Jason brings up a good point. (laughs) Does Light City, right, have young believers? Uh, The whole church. Have people gotten saved at Light City? Absolutely. Have people who did not, um, I don't know, walk with the Lord come to church, interact with Christians there, and get saved. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm just saying, and there, I mean, we know Pastor Bruce, solid dude. Everything Amazing. is solid. Yeah. The, the, I think there is this thing that is, in my opinion, been brought through tradition that it has to be milk in order to keep people, in order to get them saved. Like, nah, like, like you people need don't substance. You need real, the real, real. So, so what I feel, I, I think you mentioned a good point. All right, so I see Fred. Fred's three ahead of the while I'm talking. You got me wrong, though. Don't try to say anything Okay? Go ahead. Now, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you, you mentioned the point, Tech. I don't know what it was, but it was something about milk and uh, meat and then the, the, the method of delivery. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I think for one thing that I think that Pastor Bruce and uh, a couple other pastors do well. Uh, no other names I'm going to mention here. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that he does well is that, you know, when you are a baby, right, or a babe, and your parents want to give you some of their food, they don't just hand you the food. They put it in their mouth first, and then they chew it up, and then they give it to you in a way that you can now receive it. Now, we're both getting the same thing. I'm eating it differently, but we're both getting the same thing. But I think how it's delivered matters. I know I made a, that, that metaphor, but I think that there's a way to give people substance, meat, or, you know, um, deep things, things that are uh, revelatory, I believe the word is, and, um, and break it down in a way that can be received uh, whether a person is new or, you know, older, mm-hmm. wherever the, the walk is. But um, I do I do think it's important to that just as you desire for a person to grow, like there's only a certain amount of growth that can take place through milk. Milk is designed to get you to a certain point. And then after you've, you've got, you know, it's weird to see a five-year-old uh, breastfeeding you like, bro, you should be eating table food by now. Mm-hmm. So there is a way to to get it. And I do believe that there is a, 
you know, the pastor has a responsibility. I mean, they, they're the, you know, outside of the home pastors, they, they're leaders. They're the leader, one of the leader. And I think that they should, they should be teaching people how to eventually feed themselves. I agree. You no, know, but unfortunately the church culture is a one and done situation. A lot of times we just come to church and that's where we we try to hold out, get everything we need for that whole week till we get refilled again. So mm-hmm. that's all. Fred, go ahead and share your thoughts. We here now. We part no, the call. I'm I'm trying, man. I'm trying not to. I would just say this. I can remember back earlier on in my Christianity that I've heard wasn't nothing fancy, wasn't nothing deep. Um, I heard a message about the basic thing that when you go into the storm, Jesus is there. I'm pretty much sure I think that's what the message is saying. That God can get you through the storm, pretty much. And it was a blessing. It was a blessing the first time I heard it. It was a yes, it was a it was a blessing. And if I would have heard that message back in that point in my life mm. that was presented visually like that, and I was younger, it, it, it again, it was a blessing back then. I think I still would have been blessed by the message. Because at, at a point in my life, that's what I needed to hear. At the point in my life, it wasn't about, you know, I just wanted to just wanted to hear something. I just wanted to hear something about God. So it was a blessing. And I feel like we all had those messages back then or back in the past that we heard. It was like, oh, it was a blessing. And that because we heard so many messages that we personally outside of Sunday who listen to other messages <laughs> ourselves, I feel like, yes, we have heard a lot of a lot of messages about similar but I, all I'm saying is about this one message. I'm just saying, like, we can't ignore the fact. This is all I'm saying. It's all for is saying. You can't ignore the fact that there is one person out there who heard that message and was blessed by it. And then the fruit that, that will come from that. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So that's why I'm, that's the only reason why I'm saying is, like, you can't poo poo this message. Well, for you, for me, I don't need all that. I don't need all that. For me, I've heard that message before. At this point of my life, I've heard that message before. It, it, it would do nothing for me. For me, if you was to preach a message about that, um, what would speak to me more is coming from a different angle. But that's for Fred. All I'm saying is, is it crazy to think without condemning or ignoring the fact or forget the word condemning. I'm not saying that what you're saying is that we do have a lot of fluff messages. I'm not saying that. I agree with you 100%. But what I'm saying, we're speaking about this one message. We're speaking about being fair or Pharisee. I think it's fair suitable to look at this one message and deem that this message, this message is, uh, like I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's one message. I don't get it. It's one message. Yes, it was a lot of props. It was a lot of rain. But somebody could have watched that message and been blessed by it. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I really don't. That's all. Do you think it could have negative kind of? It could have negative consequences. Consequences. Yes. And do you think the one person that it blessed always potential, or that felt like it blessed them, uh, it always the negative consequence? Yes, I do. I do. I, I, I believe if it, I believe because I yes, I believe that if, if one person and it is going to produce fruit in their life versus. Of millions of people that it had the negative consequence, I, I believe that has has value for this reason. Because number one, I am not, I am not the judge and jury 
or how really message the to a person. Like I have no idea. I have no right. idea what that message. Is. I have no right. idea. But I feel like I feel like it would be. I feel like it's a tough. It's a, it's a tough place for me to 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 put to say on one sermon, right? To say that this message did not touch somebody. So this message is has no like. I believe like that message has the possibility because it wasn't saying anything damning. It wasn't saying anything uh, 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 like like this. I I I hundred percent believe it's surface. I agree. But, but you don't saying, agree with disagree with him though, do you? Tech? With that point, you don't no. disagree with that. Mm-mm. So I, I guess I, my only point is saying that it could have it could have blessed that one individual, and that is I think that is. In, in that sense, in that small sense, because I'm not talking about a bigger scale, I think that's probably where me and your disconnect is, is that you're talking on a bigger scale. I'm looking at this one message. I'm looking at this one message in the vacuum. I'm looking at this one thing. I feel like the question was, is the fair or Pharisee that this particular message that he did he do too much? And I feel like in this this one message, I feel like, no, it didn't do, do too much. Now, if we were talking about a group of a whole bunch of if the question is, do we have a group of pastors? Mm-hmm. And these group of pastors, are they doing are they doing too much? Then I would say, no, nah, I think I think that's okay. But again, I'm just talking about this one message. This but one I don't I, I mean that is the issue. We have a group of pastors, the Church of Jesus Christ that is doing this all over. And the, and even the idea that like if someone feels blessed or blesses somebody that justifies it having a negative effect on everyone else. Tell me the negative effect. Like if it keeps everyone else babies, if it keeps everyone else uh, so you believe that this one message to keep everybody else babies? Or you talk more you general, can, you talk about more general. It, right? I don't I don't see how you can just remove this one message. It's like if someone beats his wife. And it's like I'll just beat you this one time. It's, I'm just saying it is a pattern. You can you can't take this out without adding it to everything else. Like it's not it's not just this one message. This is not his first time preaching. You can't just solo this message and say no. You said it this one is you ask you ask the question is this this message right here? You ask the question is this message right here? Did he do too much in this message right here? We did not talk. We're not talking about t- Pastor Tar's ministry. I mean, yes, but that it is he does too too much based on a pattern. Like I, I feel like that is semantics. If you want to talk about this one message, fine. Let's let's no, just, just no, talk, no, let's no, just no, single no, it no, off no, at this no, one no, message. What, 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 we can stay at the no, one, no, one message. This, look, I would acknowledge no, 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 we'll with the one message because here's the thing. What I was saying is I don't listen to it and I acknowledge, I said it earlier. I said, look, I, I haven't listened to Pastor Todd. So if this is like his thing. I, I, I can't say nothing to that. I, I agree with you. Again, but the, I'm just the, this the issue for me is not just my uh, my Todd. It's just a pattern of come on, man. We we like you said, we've grown up in church. We, we've been my around time. church. We know the pattern of this lack of substance. Even it's even the criticisms that we hop on the, on gospel music. Your praises go up, the blessings come down. Yeah, I'm gonna get my blessing right now. Like each each new reiteration of that continues to develop this this uh believer that has this self centered view of Christianity, like where everything is about me and God gave me through this storm. And, and, and again, t- storm to me is the most overused uh, freaking uh, not illustration ever. Everything is a, a, a freaking storm because they're just it's repeating a good one, stuff. Though. Huh? It's a good one because it was, it, it, it was, it was about like, life. It, it, it was, it's, but everything in the Bible, everything is not a freaking storm. I think we just repeat what we hear other people say and we're just regurgitating what we hear we heard a thousand messages on storm so whenever we preach about a difficulty thing we just say it's a storm you remember the thing that the movie we watched years ago fred called uh marjo about that oh, yeah. dude that was terrible it, it was this, yeah. uh for 
uh, I, I think it's, it was Marjo. There was this documentary about this. Uh, I don't know how famous he was, but he was a pretty known preacher in the South. And he would go through um, different like tent revivals. This was like in the seventies. Um, and he would preach and pray for people and do these. Marjo miracles. Gartner. Yeah. Marjo. Um, and he decided that he didn't want to do it no more. He was just going to quit. And on, and his, um, last act of quitting was to do this documentary revealing the whole time that he had just been playing. And when you look at Marjo, at the end of it, the band was like counting up money. They're like, man, blah, blah, blah. Like, he doesn't give a freak about these people. But when you look at the people, they're like passing out. I, even me personally, and this is just my opinion, I think some people were blessed and touched at Marjo's meeting because God can use anybody. God can even use that dude's foolishness, greed, and whatever um, for his glory. So yes, somebody can use God can use this, and I'm sure He did use it for His glory. And somebody's like, "Oof, that you know that really helped me." But that doesn't change the fact that it itself, um, it, it, it it's a problem. It's the same thing with worship music. Our worship music is um, God's going to bless me. I'm going to get my blessing. Oh, you bless you got your blessing today, like. At what point are we going to stop and say, it's, to me, it's not about maturity, milk, meat. It's about, is this the truth? Are you, are you just peddling to me things that the scripture warns us about? That people will want messages and, and, and music and things that just tickle their ears. So I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, I didn't listen to the whole message. That's what I'm asking. You're saying... So you're saying that this is a message that tickles the ear. Like this message is 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 like it's 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 an error message. That, that's just what I'm asking. I don't listen to the whole so message. Your, um, your your thing broke up. If, if, if that is the case, our Okay, so what I'm saying. My bad, we, know, we, my we, uh, is like tripping a bit. Yeah, we missed uh, that whole thing. I'm saying there's a difference. I'm not again. Yeah, we can hear you, but you're glitching. Jason, say what Fred was going to say. Fred said <laughs> that he <laughs> agrees with everything that you've said so far and that he is now a convert. And that he um, say. he now recants everything he said for the last half hour, and he hates boats. <laughs> he oh. hates boats. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you. We can hear your voice, but uh, I see I got you to smile. You're frozen on the smile. Give it another shot. <laughs> there you go. I guess. I guess what I was saying is, I'm, and I'm asking as a general question now. Without any any uh. Uh, confrontational energy. I'm asking. I didn't listen to the whole message. I think there's a difference between saying a message is surface and then mm -hmm. saying the message is an error. And that's what I'm asking. If you're saying that the message was one that is an error, then I, I get you. But if you're saying that the message is surface, that's where we part ways. And that's what I'm asking. Like, is it is it something in the message that was error or was it surface? Surface. He's saying surface. I, I I would say surface, and I can I can almost I can almost agree with that, but the you don't want you to be right because I, I guess what I'm saying I'm is because I, I I I what I'm saying is if the message was an error, I believe that all right, shut it down. Like, we can't be doing that. But, but uh, no, again, I agree. I agree. I agree. Surface mm -hmm. should not be the total consumption of a believer. I 100% I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, I believe that, yes, if you have a congregation and you're preaching every Sunday, I believe you're going to have, you're going to speak some surface, some surface messages. Now, if you're saying to me that Pastor uh, Mike Todd, every sermon he has is a surface message. I don't know that, and I'm saying okay. I can see. I, I can see that. But again, I'm going under the illusion that every like this is just 
uh, a blip in the year type of surface message. And then he presented it, and uh, I, since it's been preached over and over, he presented it in a different way. That's yeah, we, we can't say. That. Uh, I'm sure we, neither one of us could say. And I wouldn't say that all of his messages is like that, because mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I look at him from way far. I look at him from the surface. Um, just look at his clothes. Look at his cool stuff. I like how he does church uh, visually. Mm-hmm. And that's as far as it goes for me. So I'm not judging that at all. And the only reason I even watched this one message was due to the boat and and all of the hype that it got. Actually, the first time I heard about it was Kev on stage. He did a spoof on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually liked his message better. <laughs> and, and, and this is my, my genuine question. This is my struggle with the question that you ask. And this is my honest question. At what point does continuous surface become air? So it's like, okay, God will get you through the storm. Yeah, okay. But sometimes you're going to go through the storm, you're going to drown. But if I only preach that God will get you through the storm, it's not necessarily error. It's, it's, it's partial true, but it is developing something that I think is error, which is an expectation of a, a false expectation of what it means to be a Christian and a false expectation. Which is what? Of Based God. on that. Because now that, you got my curiosity. Now that <laughs> that God will never let will will always bring you out the storm. That everything will always work out in your favor. That that you know. Well, then you didn't listen to the message either. I listened to the message. It was fascinating. <laughs> that like even when it don't work, it work <laughs> like. It, it, it's is, just, but that is is that not true? Now we got a whole different conversation. No, now, sometimes if there is. A, <laughs> If there is a storm, mm-hmm. all right, mm-mm, and the water is coming down. Come on, Jay, do it. Oh. <laughs> I drank all my water. <laughs> that was pineapple juice. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't let that fall. <laughs> that cost too much. Anyway, so if there is a storm, uh-huh. and there will be a storm, Come as on. Pastor Mike uh, said in Come his on. message, that was so eloquently uh, preached, by the way. Come on. Um. Yeah, that God forgive me for that that lie. Um, <laughs> it threw me off. <laughs> so when there's when there's a storm, just kidding. But don't bump. We we trust and believe in God. The whole goal is to be anchored, right? That was that was the term is anchored, right? Mm-hmm. I think this is the name of the series is anchored. Mm-hmm. So um our belief, our trust, our faith is anchored in Christ and not I guess and not in what he can do or will do, but who he is, I Mm -hmm. guess, and what he's able to do. Mm -hmm. And no matter what we see come across or are apprehended by that, that we remained, we remain where we are. And that's, uh, you know, firm on who he is. Mm -hmm. That like, we agree with that. Not necessarily that he's not going to get us out of like we we all believe we're going to like no matter what you go through. The the overarching belief is that we're going to get through it. That's the belief. No matter what, mm-hmm. like our hope, it's really a hope. Our hope mm-hmm. is that God's going to pull us through. We're going to get through. That's where our our faith is aligned with that he's able. Mm-hmm. Right. Do we agree with that? Not yeah. that not that it necessarily will. We're not making any promises, mm-hmm. but our hope is still in, in line with that thing based mm-hmm. on his word, based on what we believe. Well, I can we can look and, and here's here's the one thing I just want to hop on the other side of the fence mm-hmm. is that we we often forget that, and I think I mentioned it last week that uh uh, uh who Paul was crucified. He 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 was uh, well, who John who was crucified? Peter was crucified. Peter, my bad. Peter was mm-hmm. crucified, but Paul was in jail. He was in prison. He died. He got murdered. Yeah, he, yeah. And he he was murdered, but he was he was those things happened while they were in the faith, while they were believers. Mm-hmm. 
And I think we we forget about the that possibility as well. Mm-hmm. And that if we look at the anchor part, we look at how they did not stray away from their belief and their faith in God and how they did what they did despite what was happening around them. I think that's the anchor part. But I don't I think we can't forget mm-hmm. that the possibility of the other things. And those possibilities I don't think should be necessarily highlight it to a point where we're fearful but knowing that is a possibility like you know like like much like you take medicine and you kind of breeze over the side effects Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the hope is that when i take this that whatever is ailing me will be fixed but i don't even focus on the side effects because my hope isn't aligned with the side effects it's aligned with what i believe this can do now, and if the side effects happen, then we, we deal with it when it comes. Mm-hmm. But I think we're 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 in line, right? I think that's kind of yeah. I think you preached a better message than uh, you need a boat and some water. I, I got think, a boat. I think that I was a better right message here. than what would then you know. And again, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little fresh. Got but shot, I shot dollar sign J Blunt. We need these cameras. <laughs> hey, come on, somebody. We need these cameras. Yeah. But like, I, I do this old CCM song says, sometimes it comes, another one about storm. I know sometimes it comes the storm and sometimes it comes the child. I right. think. And we, he mentioned that man, in the message as well. I, I, I think like there's, if we always tell people, which is just not, that's my issue. It's just not true. They're like, okay, as long as you do this, then you will get that. As long as you, as long as you do, and it's like, okay, let's take this over to people in China who are dying and who are way more dedicated than God, than us, way more, uh, uh, you know, committed to their faith in us. We over here crying about, and not to minimize it, I'm part of it too, but like we crying about, we talking about jobs and uh, people at our work that we think don't like us, that we think are haters, and we got all these messages, God's going to make us greater than my haters. People in China and other countries are like literally getting there. Like, if it's true, then, then, then what does that look like for someone over there? And we don't, we don't ever, I'm not going to say ever, but what a point do we tell people the truth is that God has, is, God can do anything. And even when, even when, when Peter, when Paul came to God, he was like, you know, take this thing away from me. He's like, yo, you, you good. My grace is, is sufficient for you. Like, again, we, we talked about this plenty of times. We don't teach people how to exist even in the midst of certain things. Like, so I'll, on, on uh, that note, I will say, and no, I agree. I think we're saying the same thing or similar things. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I know he said that now we're using this message as the, you know, as the, the comparison to, mm-hmm. to your point. And mm-hmm. he, he said it, but it was not the point of the message. It wasn't it wasn't highlighted in the same way like that didn't get the shine that everything else. The storm got more shine than kind of the other aspects of it, the more meteor Mm -hmm. aspects. And honestly, the truth is that a message like that, when, when we talk about it, like we're talking about it now. Unfortunately, we're talking about at the end of the podcast, Mm -hmm. but that we're talking about it now is like this message could be day one. Mm -hmm. And then we can dig deeper into that same storm situation and you can pull out so much. And and that's what I think difference between meat and potatoes and milk is, is that you can literally you know, God can reveal so much to you, so many different ways out of even just a path, uh, uh, a one, one verse, not even a whole passage. But I think, you know, the aspects of going through the storm, how to sustain during the storm, all of those things could be, you know, 
they could all pull from that. I'm not sure what the point I was trying to make, but I, I think no, just no, like, you no, know, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I don't think it got the point I was trying to make is that what you're saying, what I said, didn't get the the shine, even though it was mentioned, it was mentioned in passing because I think some of the other dramatizations were, you know, we got to get to the point where the, the rain falls down. We got to get to the point where I get in the boat. So, you know, this is, these are, you know, I got to make all of this stuff work where I'm not really given some of the, 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 in my opinion, the, uh, the real, the things that's going to sustain you. Like well, if I, I drink milk, uh, that'll quench my thirst. But if I got to drink this milk and that milk's going to last me till next Sunday, mm. I'm going to be hungry. I'm going to be hurting. So I need something to put on my bones. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it didn't get the highlight. It didn't get, it didn't really, you know, get the shine that I think a message like that deserves. And hopefully he does come back and, you know, really dig in there a little bit, you know. No, I think that's true. And, I, you know, and I know we're, we're bringing it to a conclusion, conclusion here. And I, I mean, and I could be, uh, I could be, be I, 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 I try to keep myself to that same standard. You know, if if I had, you know, you know, if, if someone has, if I had Mike Todd's budget, I, you know, I might do something. I don't know if I would do a report. That but, message on General Souls, you <laughs> yeah. would have so much chicken <laughs> I, on I that gave stage, but, that express. but even <laughs> like even then, and this is just me personally. I'm not saying everybody should be like this or this is my thought process even me i I hold myself even with me and you jay was talking i'm like man you know did i do this and i know we're all like people are super critical on themselves but i think like Mm -hmm. there is a segment in my opinion of christianity that has made a game out of teaching the word and like to me, what 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 bothered me, and I'm I'm bringing it to a close. I I agree. Is like the idea. It was the same thing that bothered me about Donald Trump. And again, I'm sorry. I'm bringing it to a close. But I'm going left. Like the the what what bothered me most about Donald Trump, what sealed his fate, and me not respecting him, is me feeling like he took advantage of the people that trusted him. Like dumb. Right. Poor white people love Donald Trump, and I just don't feel like he gave a freak about him. But they don't know that. They but still they, feel the same way. They don't know. They still feel the same way. He, you mm-hmm. know, he done had these special steroids that saved his life, and he going around telling people, you know, not treating masks and whatever, crying like it's not a thing. And then he got, when he gets sick, he got special steroids for him. I, I don't like people to influence personally that I feel, and I'm not saying this is my talk, um, Mm -hmm. take advantage of people that are like looking to them. And that Mm -hmm. to me, that's a trick. And so for me, one of the things that really set me off was that, 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 that faith offering thing already feel a certain type of way of that. What this little, uh, the, the reference to the crazy faith offering. Oh, okay. Already personally feel a certain type of way that churches don't just be straight up and be like, hey, we trying to do a big offering so we can do X, Y, Z. And you make it all gimmicky, like, nah, sow this seed so you can get blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, just keep it real. Just be like, yo, we trying to have, we trying to go that free. We, we trying, trying to, to do this. Rain, yeah, like, like, let's just, you know, we trying to do a big next year. What's up? D- drop that extra. I know y'all been faithful every year. We asking for some boom this year so we can do it even bigger next year. Just just keep it 100. But no, churches do this. Yo, this is the special blessing offering and this is the crazy faith offering. And then people give their crazy faith offering and the things that you promised was going to happen to them don't happen because it don't work like that. And then you like, hey, I know you did the thing that God told you to do. It ain't happened yet. But just hold on. And then we they preach these yeah, messages like to that's keep whole nother, people grab to hold let's, it on. Let's make that an episode because, I, yeah, I'm on that too. That didn't bother me. 
I know people definitely give out a need. And then when I see what I see on the stage, it's like, bro, you wearing somebody's rent right now. Somebody who mm. believe in God for rent. You, Somebody you crazy walking, you walking in that. Uh, you know, that, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, justifying, like, these, the means of, like, you know, we can be doing a lot more, like, people struggling. And when you walking around with what they need and then you turn around and say, you know, keep trusting God, yo, come on. It happens. It happens. Uh, but all right, I guess we have uh, beat this. Point. Uh, <laughs> let us exactly. know what, what you think. Uh, Fair <laughs> Pharisee became the full episode. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we're. It was y'all episode for real. But maybe y'all was getting it. Nah, nah, man. Nah. Maybe uh, all three ahead. It is maybe it's, Jason. It's fair. Nah, I wasn't in that boat. Same, same storm, boat. different boats. <laughs> hey, that's the next <laughs> message. Same <laughs> storm, same different boats. Same storm, different boats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. your wife gone, bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, man. Apparently, it's Bro, the thing to do. Just bring your pour water on your head. But uh, either way, you know, I, I, you know, God bless that dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know the funniest that? thing all night. God bless that dude. <laughs> I don't know what to oh, say. You're so to... disrespectful. Uh, what? I'm saying what? God bless him. <laughs> Uh, you uh, just uh, totally, he went from Pastor Todd to Mike Todd to Mike to that dude. <laughs> okay, I was like, God bless Pastor Todd. I could be I could be being a Pharisee, bro. Uh, God bless the committed. ministry. I'm sure he, he's changed way more lives than, than me, probably. And uh, he's doing w- what he believes that God's called him to do. I don't, you know, again. Jesus changed lives. Okay, okay Jesus changed lives. I'm sorry. Um... You know, yeah, Jesus saved us. And, uh, you know, I, I don't subscribe to the, uh, I hate the people that do, you know, even though I was acting like it. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of certain things. I, I don't subscribe to the view of these little fake non-theologian theologians getting on YouTube and just uh, attacking preachers and trying to say how nobody saved except for them. Uh, you know, I, I don't subscribe to them. Even I'm just saying, at, at one point as Christians, can we just keep for real but that's just you know what that is could be different for everyone um but short, let us know what you think the shortery podcast hit us on um ig our youtube page is popping if you haven't been to our youtube page look at our youtube page we also have a short face clips youtube page make sure you go like and subscribe there and then also hit us with the re- reviews um Thank, thank you for everybody who's been leaving us reviews. Those are great. Um, if you got a second, just drop us a little word in there. Let us know what you what you like and what you appreciate about the show. We appreciate you guys rocking with us. We almost at episode 100. Maybe we can get Mike Todd on here. Uh, for, uh, maybe maybe his, his little brother. Charles? See if, Charles, see if Charles. Fred could hook that up for you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, who's his brother? Okay. All right. <laughs> No, don't, don't. Should get shady. <laughs> shady. All right. Peace and blessings. Uh, we love you guys. <laughs> the Shredder Fate Podcast. And we are. Wait for.